sent a prophet. The prophet identified what the issue was. And then God sent an angel. This is what one cry did. It called forth a prophet. It moved God, called forth a prophet, and now an angel visiting a man. Visiting a man. The Bible says that God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals it through his prophet. So here is God now calling this man, Gideon, forth through the ministry of the angel. And the angel addressed Gideon as a mighty man of valor. Yeah. Amen. And Gideon said unto him, that Gideon is doing what most of us do. He said, well, God, you deliver us out of Egypt, but now all this mess is happening to us. So I guess you really don't care anymore. He's complaining about his situation. He's giving concern about what's happening in the nation. He's giving concern about what's happening in the family. He's giving concern about what's happening in the home. He's sharing his concern. And the Lord, verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. My Lord. God picked this man up, called him a mighty man of valor, uh -huh. and said, Have I not sent you? You will defeat Israel. You will defeat the Midianites. And then he said unto him, Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. So here the excuses are coming. They're coming. God, how, how can this thing be? I'm the least of my father's house. We don't have any name. We don't have any pedigree. Okay. Verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. That's it, that's it, amen. And thou shalt smite the Midianites amen. as one man. My God. My God. Amen. Arise. Men of father, uh -huh. arise with purpose. Yeah. Yeah. He's not trying to get a crowd. <laughs> He's just trying to identify one man. One man that he can be with. <laughs> one man that he can say, go in this thy might. One man. One man who he said, you will smite the Midianites like one man. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? So he's calling forth one man. Yeah, my Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The purpose. The mighty man of God. You shall smite the Midianites as one man. This is the heritage and the purpose of a mighty man of all. The destruction of his enemy and of God's enemy and the establishment of the will and the kingdom of God in the earth. That is the purpose in a nutshell of a mighty man of all. It's to establish and to advance the kingdom of God in the earth. So when we are saying, men arise with purpose, your purpose is to advance, is to build his kingdom. Men, we are strategic, we are, we are, we are needed vessels. Okay. So when God calls a man, because understand is everything multiply after its kind. Okay. So when a man begins, a man of valor is established, he begins to produce men like unto himself. Okay. And then if one chases a thousand, then two can chase ten thousand. Amen. So he's calling for mighty men to 
for rise. I want to read the second text. And that's Luke chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse, uh, I'm going to read from verse 29. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh unto Bethany, and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent for two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which you which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, Korabasia. A colt tied, where, whereon yet no man has sat. Loose him and bring him here. Yes. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. Amen. Amen. I want to tell a brother in this room tonight, the Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of you. Again, I'm thankful to be here, gentlemen. I'm thankful. I'm going to try and keep in alignment with the theme of this conference. Men of valor arise with purpose. And I'm going to attempt to share with you what I believe God has placed on my heart. And it's a message called Gideon and the Court. Gideon and the Court. Now it has been said, the secret of great men is in their story. If you see a man elevates himself in society from a place of humble beginnings, from a place of nothingness, but as Gideon said, I am from a family Manasseh, we are the poorest, we are the lowest. If you see a man move from that place to a place of prominence, you need to check his story out. The secret of great men is in this story. How did you get here? You did not have the background. You did not have the education. You did not have the upbringing. But still, there is some favor upon your life. There is some guidance. There is some influence. There is divine intervention that got you from nothing to something. What's your story? The secret of great men are in their story. Amen. Speaking to men of father. Okay. And it was Dr. Martin Luther King who said this. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience. Yeah. It's not where he stands when everything is going good. Ah. The true measure of a man is not measured when he's having everything going fine for him. He said the true measure of a man is where he time, where he stands at times of challenges and controversy. Yeah, yeah. Where he stands when everything is out of order. Yeah. And he recognizes as a man of valor, this is my responsibility to bring things back into order. Amen. The true measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort, but in times of controversy. We are living in a time where there is great controversy. Our homes are under attack. We are told how to raise our children. We are told, we are told to back off of, of, of giving our children instruction. We are told that teachers have more rights than parents to children's development and well-being. The rights of parents have been 
stripped. Controversy. Controversy demands men of valor to come forth. Men of valor to step into their place. But this is what I want you to understand, right? There's no need for me to belabor the truth that our world is in need of men of valor. Just look around you. Amen. There's no need to pretend that the church, the body of Christ, is in need of men of valor. Just look around you. The church who is supposed to be a force, the most strongest institution in the earth, in a community, is on the great attack. And it would take men of valor to rise up and say, not on my watch. Amen. We will take our families back. Amen. We will parent our children. Yeah. We will teach our children right and wrong. Yeah. We will show our children the truth. Yeah. If you don't discern the urgency of the hour, yes. then you will be not, you will not function like a man of valor. Right. You will just go with the flow. Right. Oh God is searching for men who will rise up and say, we sang it, I will not die, I will declare the word of the Lord. God is looking for men who are convinced, I will not die, or even if I die, I will declare the word of the Lord. Because I am a man of valor. I am called to shift atmosphere. I'm called to break down strongholds. I'm called to advance his kingdom. Men of valor. See, Israel was in a bad shape. But God heard their cry. And he brought change to them. He brought change. And what did he do? He picked a man from among them. Word of faith and praise ministry. There is a man among you. There are men among you. I hear God said, I want to call you now. You know that my hand has been upon you, mighty man of Father. I want to call you now. Why have you hidden yourself? Come forth now that I may use you. I don't know who that is for, but there is a man in this room. The assignment is on your life. My God. My Lord. He gets a deliverer from among them. Gentlemen, we can't play church. Amen. We can't do the things we just normally do. We have to step into that place where we are functioning as men of God. My God, my Lord. One of the things I see in this building, even among the ladies that are present, is the reality of generations. Generation, God is a God of generations. Okay. We have old men, we have young, old women, we have young men. It is time we begin to pour into. It is time we begin to disciple 
the next generation. It is time. We cannot try to just exist for me, myself, and I. We've got to grab hold of another. We've got to show them this is the way forward. I might not have been able to kill this Goliath in my day, but son, ah, you are able. You can take this giant down. We've got to hold to the next generation to transfer the grace and the assignment that's upon our lives. There's a cry in this land. There's a cry in this community for men of valor to arise. But I want to do this. I want to define a man of valor. A man of valor, the word valor itself means to have great courage in times of danger. Again, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he sits in times of comfort, but in times of controversy. It's a warlike term when you hear follow. It's having moral and spiritual courage and not being a coward. It's having moral and spiritual courage to engage the forces that are coming against the family, that are coming against the church. It's having the courage to stand up and say enough is enough. My children will know God. My children will serve God. This war agenda does not work with me. I'm a man of God. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to every people. I'm bringing myself back in alignment with who God is and his purpose for my life. But for the purpose of this conference, I want to define a man of valor as this. Please listen. A man of valor is becoming a resourceful man that is able to, that God is able to use spiritually, morally, and naturally by the impartation of his grace, his gifts and virtues to advance his purpose in our lives and society. I'm going to read it again. A man of follow. When I'm saying I'm a man of follow, I'm saying I am becoming or I am a resourceful man that God is able to use spiritually, morally, naturally by the impartation of his grace, his gifts and virtues on my life to advance his purpose in the earth, in our lives and in society. A man of valor is a resourceful man. It's a man that God can use. It's a man that does, God doesn't have to make an appointment to see. It's a man that understands that he is in Christ he lives. It's a man that understands that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. He's on divine assignment. It's a man that understands that society hinges on what he does. You got to understand this, guys. Manhood is a non-negotiable. We have to develop manhood. Because if we are the reflectors of God, God is not a wimp. God is not a coward. So it's, it's good that we resemble him. Not only in, 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 um, in, in spirit by words, but in the demonstration of his character. So when he wants men of valor, he wants men that can function like unto himself. You see, we cheat ourselves by we try to water down the truth of scripture. He said to Gideon, go in this thy might. I'm putting something on you that will differentiate you. Yeah. Yeah. man of 
follow is to come in a man that God can show himself strong through. Amen. With wisdom and power and might. But I want you to know this because I know sometimes we men, we like to make excuses and get exempt. He's talking to you, pastor, not me. He's talking to you, brother on the keyboard, not me. You, you're the one. I want you to understand this. When called to be a man, the call to be a man of valor is not an exclusive calling. No, no. Everybody has that. It's not an exclusive calling. Amen. When something is exclusive, it often, it often implies that it's for some and not for others. When something is exclusive, there is a sense of, it depicts a kind of prejudice or favoritism for that kind of people, but not for this kind of people. All right. There is no exclusivity when it comes to the call of a man of valor. Amen. That's right. In our world, we see titles and names given to men. For example, we have the royal family. You will have Prince Charles I, Prince Charles II, Prince Charles III. Exclusive titles. Why? Because there will never be another. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. No other man can bear that title. Okay. It's exclusive. Yes. But not so with the call to be a man of valor. It is a type, it is a calling for every man to step into the place where he can function as how God created him to function. Amen. You are not excluded. You may be like Gideon. The Bible said Gideon was in the wine press. He was hiding from the Midian, Midianites. Yeah. You might be in a wine press tonight. Hiding. But the call to be a man of all is still on your life. Amen. Your wine press may be financially. You may be battling finances, and so you feel like I cannot adequately serve God because I have this financial situation. It's your wine press, and you're hiding in your challenges, your financial challenges. But I'm telling you, there is still the call from heaven that says, Arise, mighty man of fall. You might be having problems in your marriage, that is your wine press. But the call is still an election sure. God is saying, Arise, mighty man of all. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what you're dealing with, there is a call to be a mighty man of God. Society needs it, our children need it. You are not excluded. The potential of God on the inside of you demands that you rise up. My God. Rise up. The challenge is this too. With the man of all, everybody is included. But only the ones who will set themselves apart will embrace the call. They will hear it clearly because they're walking with God. They're serving God. They're fellowshipping with God in a manner where God can communicate with them. My Lord. That's why the Bible says don't despise small beginnings. Because in your small beginnings, you are walking with him. You're fellowshipping with him. And there will come a time when he will call you forth. Amen. So men understand doesn't matter where you are at. Give yourself over to a life that pleases God. A life of consecration. Because here's this. Character is important to be a man of all. To live in that freedom, in, to live in that grace, we must learn to build godly character within ourselves. We must be men of character. A mighty man of valor is a resource, is a resourceful man. 
that is fit for the master's use. But he has to develop character. Guys, sometimes, you know, we, we like to brush things aside, you know, between you and me, that kind of talk between you and me, because we know it's not godly. Uh -huh. There has to come a time when we say no more. I don't want to live on the fence. Okay. I want to go all in. Yeah. Jesus went all in for me. I, I just want to go all in for him. I, I don't want people to celebrate my gifts knowing that my character is tainted. I, I, I don't want to, I want to go all in. When, when there's a need outside you, when I see society deteriorating, it ought to move some part of me. It ought to. And so I have to learn to develop godly character. cannot be men of valor without character. Amen. How are we living before God? How are we living before God? How are we living? Are we living pure and holy? Are we living by faith? Do we have a vibrant relationship with Jesus? Is he a tag on? Oh. Is he real to us? My God. Okay. Okay. The sons of Issachar, Pastor Andrew, the Bible said they were mighty men because they could discern the season. And they know by discernment how they ought to behave, how they ought to respond to what's going on around them. Men of God, we have to become discerning so we know how to react, how to act, how to plant, how to plug up, how to tear down, how to establish. We have to become discerning men to know how to deal with the things that are coming against us, against the church, against our family. We have to be discerning. We have to develop godliness. We have to develop godly character. We cannot live in compromise because we want to be used by God. We want to attract the favor of heaven, the support of heaven. So therefore, we want to live in a way where God's presence always engulfs us. Man of Father. We all have potential to be great men of all. We all have it. But without the development of spiritual character, we will never tap into the grace to function. It's time for us to arise from our own agendas and be separate unto the Lord. It's time for us to say, no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. Yes. It's in him I live and move and have my being. But I want to be a mighty man of God. I know what my purpose is, is to build and to advance his kingdom. I know what my purpose is. It's to raise up a standard of righteousness in the earth. It's to build my family. It's to raise up my children in a manner where they will trust God and they will learn to walk with God, where they will able, they're able to navigate the pressures of life that is coming against them, the temptation, the, the, the accepting things of culture, the, the, the identity issues and crisis that they are facing. I have to raise them up with, a, with, a, with, a, with an understanding of who they are in God. I have to. That's what we're called to do. Because God is a generational God. God is interested.
interested in what happens to the next generation. And if we're not doing our part of as men, we fail. We fail. We're failing. And then we wonder why. Where are the fathers? Where are they? They're absent. Some of presidents still absent. Where are they? We are the example of mighty men of valor for our children. Do our children see us pray? Do they hear us pray? Do they see us going after God? Do they see us standing for righteousness? Because if they see us compromising, that's what they will do when they are faced with the challenges of life. Mighty man of all. We've got to We've got to make up our minds that I want to be this man. If you're going to give me a name, you can give me that name, but I want to live it. Because a mighty man of valor, he will stand in the gap for the generation. In the church, he will be an intercessor. Ah. In the church, he will be one that bears up the pastor in prayer. He will be one that lifts up the pastor's family. Because he understands the times and the season. He will take it seriously. He will never look at himself as incapable. Because he knows that the call to be a man of valor does not exclude him. Amen. He knows the wisdom of God. The older men, they know the wisdom of God to guide a younger generation. And you know, sometimes we get all upset when the kids don't hear us as soon as we speak, forgetting that we were once like that too. The point I'm trying to make is that sometimes we have to learn to endure. Keep sowing the word of truth in your children. Keep speaking truth to them. Keep speaking the word of God over their life. Teach them integrity. Teach them righteousness. Because the word of God is a seed. And it will eventually take root. We can't give up. We can't give up. I will close with this. The actualization of our purpose hinges not only on character, but also on our freedom. To come, mighty man, the character that we need to develop is a non-negotiable, but it's also tied to our freedom in Christ. Without freedom, you cannot act. Without freedom, you cannot stand for righteousness. Our freedom from religion, our freedom from bondage, from fear, from loss, sexual perversion, compromise, addictions, those things will make When we're free from those things, we're free to be resourceful men for God. Amen. Amen. When we have liberty in Christ, we are free to be resourceful men. He can call upon you in the midnight hour. He can call upon you to mentor, to disciple. Because you're filled with resources that comes from Him. The gift of God on our lives is resource. Their resources. The call of God, the grace of God, their resources. What do you do with resource? You serve. Uh -huh. You serve. So God wants to activate resources in us, but we have to build character 
and step into freedom. My Lord. So we freely we receive, no, freely we can give. Because if character is not in place, you will never give freely, you will give grudgingly. And then you know that is not God. So in Luke chapter 19, Jesus said to them, go into that village and there's a colt tied up there. There's a purpose for that colt, but he's tied up. There's a purpose for that man of valor, but he's tied up. Tell them I have need of him. But when he's tied up, the call is there, but he's tied up. Oh, shut up, I see you. The Lord have need of us. He have need of us as men of valor. But we're tied up. Gideon was tied up in a wine press. Some men are tied up in a job. And understand what I'm, what I'm saying. They're tied up in a job because society has told them the only function you have is to pay the bills and to put food on the table. You're tied up. You're tied up because all you want to do is to buy clothes and shoes for your children. You're tied up. You have not fully embraced the call of God, the leadership that is in you as a man of valor. You are more than a provider. You are more than somebody who pays the bills. You are a man of valor. You are a man of courage. You are a man of authority and dominion. You are a man of the kingdom. Yeah. But if you are tied up in a mindset that, oh, I got to go to work, I got to go to work, I got to go to work, and have no time for God, have no time to pour into your children, into your family, you are tied up. Uh, and God is saying, I have need of you. I have need of you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Jesus. He's calling you as the answer to the cry of the society around you. Sons of Issachar, they could hear it. You could walk into a, a mall and you could hear the cry of the society. See, if you live in the flesh, you do mind the things of the flesh. But if you live in the spirit, you mind the things of the spirit. When you go into the mall, you may see them dress a certain how. You may see them talk a certain how. You may see them act a certain how. And if that's all you see, you're in the flesh. But if you're in the spirit, you're hearing the cry for their deliverance. You're hearing the cry that says, show me another way. Show me a better way. They're crying for men of valor to come save them. They're crying for men of valor to bring deliverance to them. Like Gideon, we're called out for battle against the forces of evil that are warring against our children. I'm telling you, you cannot be distracted in this hour. You cannot be distracted in this hour. You have to be on your watch as a man of valor. You have to be on your watch because the enemy comes to kill, 
to seal and to destroy. We don't like to watch ours because it means sleep must be sacrificed. But men of valor are men of sacrifice. Men of valor will lay down what it takes to see the kingdom of God manifest and revealed in the earth. Men of God. Men of God. He's calling you out to rebuild the old waste places. So you think it's the job of just the preacher. But that's not God's calling. Not just for the preacher. He's calling men. When Gideon got ready to fight, he called for the men. And all the men that got his back, they came to his aid. Because he stood as a man of valor. And when he stood, other men were activated and acclimated to follow suit, uh -huh. Uh -huh. to fight against the enemy. Because we have one common enemy. Amen, amen. My Lord. But we need to rise up as men of valor. We need to stand as men of God. Father. Could you stand? He's calling you to set the captives free and to disciple the next generation. Your theme Arise, men of valor, arise with purpose. It's a prophetic cry. It's a prophetic cry. The earth needs you. Your family needs you. Your community needs you. It's time for us to stand up for righteousness. It's time for us to confront the darkness. It's time. It's time for men of valor to come forth and recognize God has need of you. God has need of you. Some of us, our next level is right before us. But as men, we're tied up. We're tied up. You are no use to a generation tied up. See what? 
what it is that's tying you. What has held you back from uh, What has kept you from the purpose of God? Is it the lack of an education? <laughs> Do you think you're not educated enough? What it is? What is it? That's keeping you around. I want to pray for the men in this room. And I'm going to ask you to come forward, please. There's a need for us. There is a need for us.
say it's your fault why this is happening to me why I'm dealing with this now you know I've been walking with God too long to blame any man for where I am in life it's my decision to press into God to know God that I may walk in the freedom of God and that's what I teach my son is to live in God's freedom that's what I teach my daughters to have value and self-worth because as a man of valor I am speaking into their lives I'm trying to shape their destiny they may not agree with everything but I have to keep speaking speaking until they hear because I have to have courage against a system whether visible or invisible that is warring against the identity of my children and their destiny I have to stand for righteousness so gentlemen what am I saying the call to be a man of valor does not exempt any one of you either by age or by pedigree it does not but I'm saying God has need for you. Yes. Yes. Sir, it could be the wisdom that you have gathered all these years from your own mistakes, from the things you have witnessed. You can share and pour into another generation. It could be the counsel that you have received that has helped you along the way to navigate life that this generation needs. So it could be the love that you have experienced that you need to pass to teach us how to love our wives how to care for our children Amen. so it could be teaching us how to man up how to stand strong how to stand on truth and not bow or not bend it could be those values that we need in the church we need in the community that young men will understand a woman doesn't define who you are with this generation that young men like these could understand that they can fight that they can win that they can overcome the evil temptation that they could come and talk to you and say dad this is what I'm struggling with dad this is what dad this is what they say how do I respond yeah, yeah, yeah. having that relationship Standing as a mighty man of honor because he's going to do what he sees that he does. Jesus said, What? I do nothing unless it's been commanded. I only do what the Father does. It's the mirror. Men of Father mirrors the works of God. Father, I thank you. For every man in this room, God. Father, I thank you, God, that before they were formed in their mother's womb, God, that you have ordained them. You have ordained them to be men of valor. You have ordained them with a purpose. You have ordained them with ministry on the inside of them. With ministry on the inside of them. My brother, I see ministry on the inside of you.
Father, in the name of Jesus, those things that bind this brother God, Father, we come in agreement and we command their powers to be loose now. For you have need of this man. You have need of this man. He is generational. He is generational. I pray now, God, by your power, God, that you break, break everything that binds him. Get serious, brother. Get serious. Get serious. Uh, God think more of you than you think of yourself. Get serious. Get serious. He's ready to meet you in your wine press. He's ready to meet you in your wine press. He has need of you. He has need of you. He has need of you. Arise. 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 Arise, man of Father. Arise in wisdom. Arise in counsel. Arise in might. Arise. Arise, man of God. Arise, man of Father. There are men who will, hear, will hear you. There are men who will listen to you. Father, thank you, God. The conference is prophetic. Men of Father arise with purpose. My brother, you carry purpose. Don't be satisfied doing the same old thing. Don't be satisfied going around the same mountain. Allow him, allow him, allow him, allow him to pick you up. Allow him to pick you up from where you have been left for dead. Where you feel like it's over for you, you can just go through this motion and you will be fine. Allow him to pick you up. Hey, where did they motion? Where they have abandoned you? Allow him to pick you up because the call to be a man of valor is still upon you. Get serious and allow him to live through you. Go raba shake te bangos. Shikaya raba sanda rabos. Shay raba sondos. So the Lord have need of you. He has need of you. I don't know your history, but there are things inside of you that are beneficial to another generation. He has need of you. You can change your experience from being the mundane, from being the ritualistic, from being church as usual, by going after him, by pressing into him, because he has need of you. God, what do you have need of me for? Close your voice. You have kids? inside of you 
that God wants to be imparted into others. You don't have to be kids, have kids to father others. You don't have to. My spiritual father, he died a few years ago. He has no biological kids. But he fathered multitudes by the grace of God. God has need for you. The older men need to show the young men which way to go. They need our counsel. They act crazy and stupid sometimes, but they need our counsel. He has need of you. Oh, Rabashi. You guys are brothers?
said, be not weary in well doing. Because in due time you will reap. He's at work. He's at work. Father, I come against everything that binds this young man. God, not anything that you have not set in his life. God, we command them to give way in the name of Jesus. God, every ties, every bloodline ties, curse, hex, whatever it is, God, we command your powers to be broken. That it release freedom. Mm. Release freedom. Release freedom to him in the name of Jesus. Release freedom. Release freedom to him, Daddy. Release freedom, Daddy. Jesus. I place him on your altar now. Jesus, I place this young man on your altar. Before these witnesses. And I ask you to stand in the gap for him. With intercessions, with mourning and groaning, Jesus. Stand in the gap for him. That he will step into the freedom. That you have ordained for his life. That he will step into it, God. Restore everything the enemy has stolen from him. Restore in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Father, I thank you for this pillar of wisdom. God, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you're still able to use it. And I pray, God, he will arise. He will arise. Take it serious. Arise. When you look out on the streets, you see where we're headed. You see what's happening to us. You see how we're killing each other. You see how we have no moral compass. You see it. Arise, man of God. Take to the place of prayer what you see. Stand in the gap for a generation. And give God liberty to move. Give God liberty to move. Thank you, Father. I hear God say, usher them in. 
usher them in. Stand your ground and usher them in. I feel like God is saying, you have generational influence. You have a way that you can connect with a generation. And God is saying, rise up and make the connection and usher them into my kingdom. Because you are a man of honor. I have called you to that place. Lay aside the weight. Lay aside the things that are holding you back from giving more of yourself. Because I've placed it inside of you. Freely you have received. Freely you have. Thank you, God. continental breakfast as we gather together and just ask the Lord just to continue to show us 
how to be better fathers, better husbands, better um, brothers, and to pour into the next generation. Amen. We hear the Lord speaking to us that we have to arise and make a difference to the generation that is following us. Amen. And so we want to find our place, our position, as we allow the Holy Spirit to use us. Amen. To be an impact to the next generation. Amen. 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 The Bible says, For his truth endureth to all generations. So whatever generation we find ourselves in today, we have to arise to the challenge. Amen? Amen. Christ, stand on our uh, feet, and uh, we will see you on Sunday as the man of God come forth again to deliver. And finally, uh, as we close off on Sunday morning, amen. What's such a mighty word today, amen? amen. Praise God, amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for using him. Just stretch your hands toward my brother. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for that which he has poured out unto us today. We thank you for replenishing his strength. We pray that you cover him, O oh God, as he sleeps tonight. You just bind every plan of the enemy, retaliating spirit that may interf interfere with his rest. Oh God, we thank you for his spirit, man, that you will continue to sustain him. Oh God, and we pray that you may refresh him. Oh God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, cover his family, we pray. We pray that we be the blood of Jesus against every plan of the enemy, every device, every strategy. We just cancel them now in the name of Jesus, the angel of the Lord and camp. Run about them that fear you and deliver, fly every trap of the enemy right now. There in Columbus, Ohio, as you surround his family, oh God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody say, Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, oh God, for this time, oh God, that your people have come and set aside uh, their schedules and the time that they have spent in your presence tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for pouring into us, O oh God. We thank you for your word. Your word indeed is a lamp unto our feet Hallelujah. and a light unto our path. Yeah. Oh Jesus, even as we travel on the highways back to our different places of abode, we pray that your angel again will be assigned to us to, uh, to deliver us and camp around the board and deliver us so that we may be home safely to our families. Oh God, we pray for the rest of the body that are not here. We pray that you will, your presence will continue to abide with them. Oh God, and keep us and preserve us from all evil. In Jesus' name I pray. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Turn to a man and say, Arise, arise. Ladies, speak to the man. Man, arise, arise. Amen. With purpose. Amen. We thank everyone, the musicians, we thank you for coming. Arise. Speak into their destiny.